Hello. Today I will be talking about dissecting cell lines, about the clinical manifestation, the common comorbidities, the trihoscopy features, and the treatment. Let's go. Dissecting cellulitis is a quite unusual type of disease because it starts as a non cell alopecia and if it is diagnosed and treated early enough, it is possible to obtain full hair regrowth. However, then the disease transforms into cell alopecia when the hair loss is permanent. Dissecting cellulitis affects mainly young men and among young men, these are usually sportsmen and bodybuilders. It may be associated with a physical activity, but it has also been shown that in approximately 14% of cases, dissecting cellulitis is associated with the use of anabolics. Dissecting cellulitis very often coexists with acne conglobata and with hydradenitis suppurativa, and when these three diseases coexist in one patient, we are calling it the follicular occlusion triad. Very rarely, it may happen that there are four diseases of a similar pathogenic background in one patient, and in addition to the three diseases, also a pyeloneedle cyst. All these diseases seem to have a common pathogenic background. If you imagine that this is a hair follicle, and the sebaceous gland. The sebaceous gland produces sebum, which is normally secreted to the skin surface. However, when the hair follicle is blocked, then there is a retention of the sebum under the skin. It will form a pustule, then a nodule, and then an abscess. This will destroy the hair shaft, and then it will destroy the hair follicle. So this is the stage when the disease becomes permanent. So in other words, we will have few stages of the disease. In the inflammatory phase, we will have first a pustule, then a nodule or a cyst, then an abscess, and then these abscesses tend to interconnect and they will form tunnels containing purulent material under the skin. And then it switches to the fibrotic phase when we have first fibrosis and then development of cicatricial alopecia. If we perform a bacterial swab test, it may be positive. However, the bacteria are not the primary cause of the disease. The presence of bacteria is secondary to the pathogenic events which I was talking about a moment ago. For this reason, bacterial swab tests are of limited value in clinical practice. Clinically, the disease is manifested by the presence of nodules, of hairless nodules. They are usually localized primarily in the occipital area. In later phases of the disease, the number of these nodules will increase and the disease will develop into multiple interconnecting areas of cicatricial alopecia. The disease is very often associated with itch and pain. Approximately half of the patients will experience either pain or itch or both. In trichoscopy, the most typical finding will be the so-called big 3D yellow dot with a black dot inside. This is the effect of the cyst or the nodule which is under the skin surface with the hair shaft which is broken, which was destroyed because of the inflammatory process. And this remainders of the hair shaft will appear as a black dot. However, the hair shafts are usually not completely destroyed. They keep on growing and this is what will make them appear as broken hairs, usually on the periphery of the active part of the lesion. And at one point, there will be also areas with no hairs, but these areas are covered with yellow dots, meaning that there are still hair follicles, meaning that this is still a reversible phase of the disease. When we say black dots, this is not really precise because the residues of the hair shafts, they do not always appear as dots. They may have a high variety of different shapes and sizes. And also occasionally in dissecting cellulitis, we may see some exclamation mark hairs. So the presence of exclamation mark hairs does not exclude the diagnosis diagnosis of uh, dissecting cellulitis. And this is what we will see or how we will see it in, with a handheld dermoscope. So the structures which we can appreciate will be exactly the same, just we see them in smaller size. Regarding the vascular pattern in trichoscopy of dissecting cellulitis, it may look a little bit like psoriasis. 
So it is important to distinguish the psoriasis-like vascular pattern in the course of disecting cellulitis from true psoriasis. In an advanced phase of the disease, in the phase of the formation of the abscess, we will see some clefts in trichoscopy. These are like skin pockets which are filled with hair tufts. So there may be a hair tuft formation also in dissecting cellulitis. At this phase of the disease, if we are using a contact dermoscope and we push it against the skin, there may be a discharge of the purulent material. This discharge will then dry into quite big, structureless yellow areas. In situations where the clinical presentation and trichoscopy are not sufficient to make diagnosis, we may go on with performing a trichoscopy guided biopsy. This is the type of image which we like to see in our patients with dissecting cellulitis. This is the regrowth phase of the disease and we see multiple small regrowing hairs. Regarding treatment, the treatment of choice are retinoids and they are effective in up to 100% of patients. Unfortunately, there are patients who will have a relapse. In such cases, we have to search for other treatment options, including the new biological treatments. Dissecting cellulitis is a disease which is in the early phase, non cicatricial alopecia, then it turns into cicatricial alopecia. The most typical finding in trichoscopy are the yellow dots with the black dot or black structure inside, and the retinoids are the treatment of choice. The most important message from my presentation today is that early treatment allows to prevent the extensive deep inflammation and it allows to prevent the permanent hair loss. And if you found this short video useful, please consider giving me a like. Thank you very much. See you next time.